Hey, welcome to video 13. Today we're going to talk about the regions of operation for a transistor. But let's start with a quick review of what we did in the previous video. And that was we determined the Q point value equations for this transistor, which is just an NPN BJT with fixed base biasing and emitter feedback. Now we used an active region model for the transistor that was pretty simple. And we didn't talk anything about other regions of operation. So today, that's what we're going to discuss. And here's what we've got. Now, we've got three regions of operation that are important to us. The active region, cutoff, and saturation. The previous circuit we assumed was in the active region. And in that region, the transistor is modeled as a current controlled current source. The collector current is controlled by the base current. The characteristics to look for to know whether a transistor is in the active region or not are listed down here at the bottom. Uh, the collector base junction will be either reverse biased or have no bias on it. Uh, that is, the collector to base voltage is greater than zero. That reverse biases the collector base junction. The base emitter junction is forward biased and it's going to drop approximately 0.7 volts if it's a silicon transistor. In the active region, VCE, the collector to emitter voltage, is somewhere between zero and VCC volts. And the collector current is somewhere between zero milliamps and the collector saturation current. And we'll talk about that in a second. All right, so let's go over and look at cutoff next. In the cutoff region, the transistor is turned off and it can be modeled as an open circuit from collector to emitter. The characteristics to look for uh, that indicate cutoff are the collector base junction is reverse biased. Okay, same as we had in the active region. VCB is greater than or equal to zero. But in this case, the base emitter junction is either reverse biased or has no bias. In other words, we, we're not turning on the base emitter junction, so no base current will be injected. All right, when this uh, occurs, when this mixture of uh, conditions exists, the transistor is off and the collector current is zero, the emitter current is zero, and the collector to emitter voltage is the maximum possible, which we call VCE cutoff. All right, the other extreme is saturation. That's when the transistor is turned fully on and it's carrying as much collector current as it possibly can, IC equals max. All right, in this case, the collector to emitter voltage is gonna be minimum. Ideally, that would be zero, but for a real transistor, it's a few tenths of a volt. We call that V sub CE sat for VCE saturation. The uh, characteristics to look for in saturation are the collector base junction, that is this diode, is forward biased. So we're dropping about negative 0.7 from collector to base. Uh, the base emitter junction is also forward biased and now, these two barrier potentials seem like they should add up to negative 0.7 plus 0.7, which is zero, and that would give us a VCE sat of zero. But because of differences in doping levels and so on between the collector and emitter, these two values aren't exactly the same, and that's why we usually end up with about 0.2 volts uh, dropped from collector to emitter. That plus the fact that we've got some ohmic resistance inside here that causes a drop as well. So uh, VCE sat is usually around 0.2 volts, but very often we'll just pretend it's zero and that's not gonna cause very much error. And lastly, again, the collector current is maxed out at IC sat and that is determined by external circuit values uh, connected to the transistor. All right, now let's come back over to the active region for a second. All right, when we're in the active region, the transistor is behaving like a current controlled current source. And 
I've got this uh, transistor over here. Let's hook up some sources to it and do a few uh, tests. All right. Oops. Uh, here we go. All right. In the collector, I want to put an ammeter and a variable voltage source. Okay, that would be our VCC source. It can vary. The emitter, I'm just going to connect to ground. And over at the base, I'm going to put another ammeter and a variable current source. I'll call that I sub B. All right. Now, what I'm going to do is develop some curves for this transistor that describe the operation of this model in the active region. All right, so what we're going to look at is a graph of collector current versus VCE for different levels of injected base current. All right, suppose we adjust this base uh, current to zero milliamps. We've got no base current. So we have not forward biased the base emitter junction. If I start to turn up VCC here, which is also VE, VCE, because it's connected right across it, what we'll see is if I don't inject any base current, I can keep increasing VCE and we don't get any increase in current. So that would be with IB equals zero. Now, if I turn the base current up a little bit, say to 10 microamps, and then start to increase VCE from zero up, we get something like this. That's with IB equals 10 microamps. And if we go turn this voltage back down to zero, increase this to 20 microamps, we'll see this happen. That's with IB equals 20 microamps, and so on. We can keep doing this and generating more and more curves. And what we're seeing is that the collector current kind of levels off at a relatively fixed value. And let's say here at this curve where we leveled off, it was at about one milliamp of collector current. So we had 10 microamps of base current, one milliamp of collector current. We know beta equals IC over IB. So that would be one milliamp over 10 microamps equals 100. So if we got a set of curves like this, we'd have a transistor with a beta of 100. Okay, these are called a family of collector curves. And they pretty much describe the behavior of the transistor that we care about. All right, you can tell the beta of the transistor by dividing the current that the collector levels off at by the uh, base current that's injected, and it should stay relatively constant. Now, ideally, these curves would be perfectly flat, but for a real transistor, they tilt up, and we're gonna talk more about that in a future video. But for right now, this is a little bit more information about the active region and an explanation of cutoff and saturation. Remember, these are the voltages to look for to tell which region you're in when you have a circuit in front of you and you're making measurements. And uh, that's it for today. We'll continue next uh, video doing some load line analysis. So I will see you then.